Welcome back. Today let's uh, control this little DC motor using a super simple setup. H bridge, Raspberry Pi, here's the zero model, but you can use pretty much anyone. Power source, DC motor, wires, jumper cables. So all there is to it is you got the uh, motor being uh, wired to the H bridge, you got the uh, battery powering the H bridge and motor, and you got the Raspberry Pi telling it uh, to either go forwards or backwards. The only important thing is you gotta have the ground being shared by both uh, the Raspberry Pi, the H bridge, and the battery. That's why I got a little jumper wire shoved into that uh, middle tab there. And that's also connected to the battery's black wire. And here we have the Raspberry Pi's pin 12 and 32 wired into the H bridge. These have hardware PWM signals, so we don't have to rely on software timing for that. If you don't know what PWM is, it's just the type of signal we're going to use to control the speed of the motor. Now I'm going to be controlling the Raspberry Pi from my laptop, but if you want you can plug in mouse, keyboard, and monitor and do it straight from there. Here we are inside the Raspberry Pi. The only thing we need to do is to create a little Python script that's going to be controlling the output of those two GPIO pins. It's a super simple script. You just need to uh, import two little libraries, the GPIO one and the time library, which is handy to test our motor to tell it to keep going for, say, one second and then stop. Next line is to disable the warnings from the GPIO ports, because they might be used for something else such as audio, and we don't want them to complain about it. Let's set up the uh, IO mode to BCM. What that means is that we'll be using the Broadcom numbering found in the system on a chip instead of the uh, numbers of the exposed pins on the Raspberry Pi. They're not the same, so that can cause a bit of confusion. So for example, the pin that we're setting up here, pin number 12 for the system on a chip, is actually, when you count the pins on the Raspberry Pi's header, number 32. And number 18 on the system on a chip is pin number 12. So just make sure to be appropriately confused if you don't want to mess up the wiring. We're just going to set up two little variables for each one of the pins. One's going to be driving the motor counterclockwise and the other clockwise. You, the first value is the pin number and the second the frequency at which we're delivering the PWM signal. Let's start both of these at zero and then we're going to drive the first pin making it uh, have a cycle of 100%. Be careful that the value put there is not the same as the frequency value so it's actually a floating point number. For example, if you put a frequency of 200 and wanted to drive at uh, full speed, you'd still put 100 in the change duty cycle. We're going to make it keep turning for uh, about one second by using the sleep function, and then not to forget to stop the signal at the end, because then when you start driving it from the other pin, if you don't make the other one stop, it won't go. Doing the exact same thing for the other direction, you wouldn't have necessarily to put stop at the end of the other one there, but it's just uh, good manners. Well, enough chit chat. Let's execute that script and see if we can get our motor turning. And... Oh, there you go. Worked in both directions. Now, to control the speed of the motor, I'm just writing a little for loop there that'll go from 0 to 100%. This is also useful to know when the motor actually starts spinning, because it might not start spinning until you reach about 60 or even 70% maximum value of the PWM signal. You can see it's struggling. So it only really started getting going at around 70%. So if we want to use this in a real application, we'll be restricted to the 70 to 100 range. And that's not counting the addition of gears or wheels, which might restrict the range of our RPMs to an even smaller one. 
But that's something for when we're building our gearbox and holder for this Wii Motor. So, until then, see you next time.